Welcome back everybody on how to host your own dedicated server guide with me. I'm going to show you how to host your own 7 days to die 2.0 Storm's Brewing major update dedicated server with Steam CMD on a Windows machine. You will need to own the game with your Steam account since this will require you to log in with your Steam account to make a dedicated server and update the server when patches roll out. All right, let's go ahead and begin. First off, let's download Steam CMD. If you have it already on the machine, you'll be hosting your server. First off, download Steam CMD. If you have it already on the machine, you'll be hosting your server. So simply just open up a browser and just type in Steam CMD downloads and make sure it's on this one. Go to Steam CMD, web developer community. Click on Windows. Click on the links to download the files. So while you are still downloading Steam CMD, let's just go ahead to your C drive and we'll just make a new folder called Steam CMD. All right. Okay, once you have Steam CMD downloaded, it should be in the downloads folder. Just go ahead and right click, hit extract all. You can browse and we'll go to this PC C drive and we're gonna look for that new folder you just created called CCMD. Let's go ahead and select the folder and just hit extract. And once it's in this folder, it should just only have this steamcmd.exe file. And once you double click on it, it will go ahead and populate all these other files that you need here. And that's it. Just close it out. Alright, now we'll need to launch command prompt. Just go to your start menu, type in command. And then the black terminal screen should show up. Just click on it. And we're going to type in this command, all right? CD space C colon backslash steam CMD. All right, and hit enter. Okay, now we are going to go ahead and put this whole line in there. I'm just going to copy and paste my command in there. All right, I'm going to maximize my screen so you guys can see it. All right, so this is where you put in your Steam account name. So make sure you fill that in. All right, and what it's gonna do is gonna make a new folder called Seven Days to Die 2.0 in your C drive. And I'll show you guys here in a bit where we can find that. And make sure you do have this slash beta space version 2.0. Very important because you're gonna be grabbing the new major update version 2.0 with this command line right here. If you don't have this in here, you're gonna be downloading some other versions of Seven Days to Die and it's not going to be version 2.0 so you can do this basically with any of the versions you can do it the latest experimental uh, version 1.3 1.2 1.1 whatever they have available and then once you do put in your steam account name you just hit enter once you hit enter it's going to download all the needed files necessary to host the dedicated server and how we're going to navigate that we're going to go to our file explorer go to this pc Go to your C drive where your operating system is installed. And we're going to find that new folder that we just created. 7 days to die 2.0. There it is. And these are all the files you'll have once you do download all the files successfully from Steam CMD and the command line that I just gave you. And now we're going to be configuring this server config. If you just right click and hit well, before we edit it, let's make a copy and a backup of it just in case you do mess up anything on it. That way you can switch back to the default settings. So we're just going to copy and then right click and then paste. I already made a backup of the default configs right here, so I'm not going to paste it. But just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go ahead and paste it anyways. All right. So it's going to look like that pretty much. And you can rename it to server config backup, whatever else that makes more sense to you. But just for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to delete it and just keep my own copy. All right. And we're just going to right click and edit. And here are some very big key points. I'm using notepad to edit the uh, XML file. But um, key thing to edit here is the server name. Uh, make sure you name it to whatever you want to name it, a friendlier name for your friends to find and uh, in my demonstration it's Rakuza 2.0 and you can put in the server description make sure you do put in everything within the quotation marks and put in your server passwords so people can join the server securely 
my super secure password <laughs> and one key thing is the region as well make sure this is according to your region um, just for demonstration purposes this is the default setting so it's North America East and I'll kind of show you why that matters when you're in the game searching for it because if your filter is on Central America and you're trying to find this server you're not gonna find it because it's in North America East right okay and um, the max player count is only eight for this version to my knowledge um, I'm gonna keep pretty much everything defaulted but these are the main settings that you'll need to look um, but if you do want to adjust any other settings just make sure you read all through these descriptions on what they do and you can change the values to your liking but other than that I'm just gonna keep everything the same but feel free to change and modify anything you want to for your gameplay experience okay once you're done with this just hit Control S or save file and save and then you can simply click it out of it all right you will also need to port for 26900 8080 through 8081 26900 through 26902 you will need to log into your router to achieve port forwarding if you have never done this I would kind of show you how you can just launch command prompt on your dedicated server. Type in IP config. Take note of the IPv4 address. Take note of the default gateway IP. Open up a browser. Type in the default gateway IP address. If you don't know the login information at this point, it should be on your router with a sticker with the username and password. I highly recommend changing the default password if you haven't already, just for security reasons. If you don't know how to port forward on your modem router, you may just need to Google it for your specific model. But in my case, I am going to log into my Asus modem. I'm going to go to WAN, port forwarding, add a profile, and add in the ports that need to be forwarded to my dedicated servers. Now, one thing we'll need to do is launch the server now which is start dedicated.bat file. Just make sure you're still in the same screen, still in the C drive, and that new folder you just created, 7 days to die 2.0, they should have a batch file called start dedicated. Press any key continues, press any key. All right, now you, the real deal starts, right? Okay, once you see this green screen, it's a good sign. That means your server is starting. It's going to take a while for it to generate the map. So just give it a few seconds or minutes actually. Especially if you did a random world generator, it's going to take quite a bit. So we're just going to chillax, relax, grab some snacks and I'll be right back. Okay. All right. While we're waiting for the server to start up, um, there is one key thing that we need to look at is which is your mods folder. If you don't have any mods, feel free to skip this. Just look at the time lapse. Um, but if you do have some mods currently installed, make sure they're compatible with version 2.0 and make sure it's installed on the server as well. If it's not, then it's not going to upload the mod and your game could possibly crash. But here is one key thing to look at your mods folder if you don't know how to. Uh, just go to your Steam app. You should be up the Steam homepage go to home and your library home I'll look for your seven days to die and also do make sure that your version is 2.0 so you right click go to betas make sure it's on version 2.0 version 2.0 is stable okay and now we're gonna go look at their mods folder which go to install files and go to browse and it should pop up another window this is where exactly your seven days to die is uh, installed and you should have a folder called mods but I've already went ahead and renamed it so that way it doesn't mess up my loading um, I had to rename it to something else dash old or dot dash rebirth whatever overhaul mod that you installed previously just go ahead and rename it to something else but if you do have some compatible mods you can go to the or make a new mods folder mods just like that and you can download all the mods you need in here 
but just make sure you do download it on the server as well. So it needs to be on the client side and it needs to be on the server side for these mods to work on the dedicated server. So just keep in mind, if you guys want me to show you guys that, then leave a comment down below and I'll make a separate video on that, okay? Okay, it looks good. So once you're at this screen, pretty much, that means your world is loaded up and we're gonna launch the game now, so let's get to it. All right, we are at the menu screen. Okay, now we're gonna do join a game. All right, and make sure your region is in the correct region, okay? So in my case, it's North America East and the server name that you named it. In my case, it's Rakuza. And we're gonna hit the start search. All right, there it is, there it is. And make sure you, if you do find it, just hit the toggle favorite so you don't have to search for it again. And if in the future, you can just go to your favorites in history and get right into it. And once you do find it, just hit that hit the server and hit connect uh what the oh crap i gotta restart the game anti-cheat protection okay i guess that's one annoying thing about anti-cheat you could turn that off too if you want to but if you don't trust your friends like i do then leave it on okay okay i got easy anti-cheat back on all right and we're gonna connect with our super secure password that we already submitted in there And it's just gonna do its thing. All right, we are cooking, baby. We are cooking. All right, as you can see, we joined our Navis game server, dedicated server. Started next to this house. Everything looks peachy. Everything looks peachy. And yeah, there is your dedicated server. And there you go. If you did find this helpful, please like and subscribe. This will help the channel grow, and I do plan out to put more dedicated server guides when time allows. Let me know down in the comments down below which one to see next. Cheers, and I'll see you next time.